Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In today's lecture, I want to do a quick recap of mass balances as we did it in the CAR 113 module. Let's start with our system where we have some streams flowing in and out of the system. And we know that in equals out plus accumulated. So the accumulation term is if more is coming into the system than what's going out, the system will accumulate some mass. It can also be a negative term where if more goes out of the system than what's coming in, the accumulation will be negative and the system will run empty. But last semester we never looked at these. We only looked at problems where there was no accumulation and we referred to these as steady state problems. So for these steady state problems, we always had that the mass in equals the mass out. We also said that the moles of element in equals the mole of element out. So for instance, we had one mole carbon in, then we had one mole carbon going out of the system. But the moles in, is that equal to the moles out? And the answer to this is no. How can I say this? Let's look at a system where I have carbon coming in, I react it with oxygen to form CO2. Then I would have one mole of carbon coming in, one mole of oxygen coming in, and I have one mole of CO2 going out. So this means that if I say one mole in plus another mole in, one mole of carbon, one mole of oxygen, it must be equal to one plus one equals two, one mole of CO2 going out. And you can see here that if I would do a carbon balance, I have one mole of carbon coming in and one mole of carbon going out. I have one mole of oxygen coming in and one mole of oxygen going out if I do an oxygen balance. So this line still holds true, but this doesn't hold true. Remember, we discussed it in a little bit detail last time. The last thing I want to talk about today is the strategy to solve mass balances. Can you remember that we had 10 steps that we could follow to solve mass balances? And here they are. Now, I'm not going to spend time on this. You can go through the textbook and read up on these. I do, however, quickly want to talk about two things. That is the degree of freedom analysis, which sits here under 0.7, and then the number of independent equations. We spoke about that and we said that only if the degrees of freedom of the system is zero can we solve the mass balance and get a unique problem. And then the number of independent equations depends on the number of species in the system and also the number of places in the system where we have a change in mass. So if we have two unit ops and I have two places where the total mass flow rate of the system changes, then I can do two independent mass balance, either over every single unit or over one of the units and a total balance. Quick recap on these. Also go look at the old videos for CR113 that we uploaded on mass balances. Talk to you again next week.